psalmist reminds us that the Lord is our strength and our shield. Our hearts trust in him and we are helped. Comforting words in the midst of what is of course an extraordinary world at the moment. But it is good to welcome each and every one of you to church to worship this morning. For folk who are coming back to church following the lockdown, welcome home. For folk who are watching us online, thank you for welcoming us into your homes or wherever you are today. And if this is your first time to a service at St. Mary's, a very wonderful welcome to you. It is so good to be able to celebrate with you today. Before we begin our worship in church, just a few guidelines, if I may, to help continue to keep us safe and well at this time. Friends, unless you're leading the service this morning, any tables, or if you're reading a Bible lesson, or leading the intercessions today, please do remember to wear your mask. You're all doing it now already, which is wonderful. Although it does mean that I can't see your very handsome and beautiful visages. Our service today will be a set mass. Our singing is still unfortunately not recommended in church. Uh, again, there will be no physical sharing of these, but do share the things virtually as it were, with one another from the comfort of your pews. And do remember, please, to maintain social distancing as best as you can. When it comes to receiving communion, the church wardens and side people will invite a row at a time to come forward. Uh, please do follow the arrows between the choir stalls there. There's a way up on this side where the organ is and a way down on the other side by the pulpit there. And when you come to receive communion, uh, please do stand at the altar area to receive. And we will receive in one kind only, the bread only. But do please be assured that you receive the full benefits of the sacrament. Uh, there's no processions or offertory collection uh, today, but there are collection plates by the pulpit there and by the uh, sack porch there. Do please give as you can. And again, during these extraordinary times, thank you so much for your donations, which keep this church going. If you're online, you can click on any of the church websites and donate that way. And again, thank you for helping keeping this church and our ministry here in Caldwell alive and well. I do hope, friends, that you've got sight of our order of service. And the St. Uh, Mary's Mirror Notice Sheet and the Hill Magazine. If you're online watching this morning, they're all free to download from there, so do enjoy. I wonder if anyone else here has got any notices that they'd like to share. Perhaps the good news of an anniversary or a birthday. Now, friends, is the time for your two seconds or so of Ah, please share. Many happy returns, Pat. Many happy returns. I have uh, some good news of a marriage coming up here in St. Mary's. I have a set of bands to read. So, friends, I published the bands of marriage between Herman Zanzala de Dunga and Lydia Christine Purcell. Friends, this is the first time I'm asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they might not marry, you are to declare it now. Lydia, if you're watching online, you've got away with it for one week. <laughs> and of course, friends, the best thing we can do is to pray for her and Lydia. So let's. Eternal God, give your blessings to her and Lydia. In all their hopes and in all their dreams. 
May these come true through their faith in each other and their trust in you. Teach them how great is the joy which comes from sharing, how deep the love that grows with giving. Lead them in peace to the day of their wedding, and be with them in their hearts and homes, now and forever. Amen. The last bit of good news I want to share with you, friends, before we move into worship is regarding our friends in our New York Christmas youth group who have had exams in what has been an extraordinary difficult year. And I've got some news for us. Harry from the youth group will be going on to Sheffield. Thomas will be going on to Leicester. Byron will be starting a civil engineering apprenticeship. And Elizabeth has been awarded a merit in law and she's starting to look for an apprenticeship. Although I'm slightly worried about Elizabeth knowing more about law, she may come and have to arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our NYC have done brilliantly well and you know if we were allowed to clap in church and to cheer, I know that we would wholeheartedly. But I have got Harry, Thomas, Byron and Elizabeth little gift each on behalf of the church. And I wonder if Martin, please, as our esteemed NYC leader, if I might be able to pass these on to you, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm giving you now, if that's okay. And then you can pass them on in time to the youth. That would be fantastic. So let's all pray for the youth now, in the midst of what is an exciting future in all that they're going to look into. Heavenly Father, thank you for our New York Christians, our youth group here at St Mary's. And thank you that in the midst of a very troubled year for each and every one of us, they have come through with good marks and good prospects for the future. So continue to pour out your blessings upon them now and in all that they undertake. In Jesus' name. Well, friends, let's turn to our orders of service now. Just be still for a moment as we recall and remember the happenings of the past week or so. And then we join together in our prayers of penitence. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our city, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And assured of God's eternal love and forgiveness. If you're able to stand as we say the glory of today. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God of heaven and earth, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
the stillness of our hearts and in the stillness of our hands. Let us pray. The words of the comments, that special prayer to bring together all our thoughts and worship this 10th Sunday after Trinity. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do please be seated for our Bible. Friends, if you're able, please stand as we hear the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Reading from Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, 
for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Heavenly Father, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and impress your good self upon them. Take our hearts and fill them with nothing but the fire of God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, do please be seated. You may have heard the story of a man walking next to a cliff one day when suddenly the earth gives way and he falls over the edge. In desperation, the man manages to grab hold of a plant growing out the side of the cliff and hanging hundreds of feet above the ground. The man yells, God, please help me, until there is a thunderous voice overhead that says, do you believe in me? Yes, yes, the man replies. Do you trust in me? The voice asks. Yes, yes, just please help me. I can't hang up much longer. Then let go. The voice commands, and my angels will lift you up. The man, holding on to that branch, the roots begin to snap out of the hillside. He looks up and says, Is there anyone else up there who I can talk to? <laughs> Often in life, we face hardships that can weaken our faith. Sometimes we feel that we can no longer hang on. It seems that our prayers remain unanswered and everything is getting worse rather than getting better. Defeat, it seems, stares us right in the face. When we are confronted with insurmountable problems, what should our attitude be as God's people? How should we respond to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune? And most importantly, do we have the faith, really have the faith, to trust God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our strength? In our Gospel reading, a Canaanite woman finds Jesus, and she cries out to him in desperation, have mercy on me, Lord. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. The woman seeks Jesus out, not for her own good, but for the good of her holy daughter. So there is no doubt that Jesus will answer her request immediately. Right? Is that what happened? What is the response of Jesus? Well, the scripture says, He answered her not a word. And that, I guess, would be the most shattering response that that Canaanite woman did not expect from our Saviour. She approached Jesus with all the hopes and faith that Jesus would resolve her problem in the most positive, favourable, healing way. 
as her request was anything, anything but selfish. And to add to the dilemma, Christ's disciples come and told them, they urge Jesus, send her away, for she shouts after us. But Jesus, then, as now, knew exactly what he was doing. Jesus wanted to pass the faith of the Canaanite woman, and in that, Jesus also wanted to teach his disciples a lesson that they should learn from the incident. When the disciples urge Christ to send the woman away, Jesus says, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that, I guess, is another statement that could have shattered the woman's faith into pieces. The woman at this point, she could have stopped and turned away from Jesus. She could have played herself with a hundred questions of doubt. Is this the Christ who Mary one was talking about? Is this the Christ who healed many people? Is this the same Christ who had compassion on the poor and mercy on the whole world? Is this the Christ who could bring a person back to life? Why does he not heal my suffering daughter? Why does Jesus not heal me? Is my request too hard or too small for Christ to answer? Surely that woman should have left in despair and in disappointment. But she replies instead, Lord, help me. How badly the woman wanted the healing. She is fervent in her prayers. Just in case her first statement to Jesus does not suffice, or maybe she asked wrongly, she repeats her request with more zeal, more urgency, more fervency. But Jesus, who searches our hearts and tests our minds, still had one final statement to further test the Canaanite woman's faith. And this statement could have left her devastated and shredded bare of all her remaining faith. Jesus says, It is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs. At face time, friends, it seems that Jesus is insulting the woman, but nothing could really be further from the truth. What Jesus is saying here is, will the Canaanite woman be prepared to ask help from a Jew, a race that had disgusted her and her ancestors throughout the centuries and regarded them as mere dogs? In addition to this, the Canaanite woman is not a Jew, which means that she cannot eat of her family's table. But the Canaanite woman, she is so humble that she was willing to eat the breadcrumbs that fell from the master's table. In most cases, people who really want to follow Jesus need to be really humbled first. Instead of resenting Jesus, instead of being angry, the Canaanite woman does not retaliate or try to argue with him. She could have said, I am not a dog. I am a woman who has a child who needs your help. If you are going to demean me, then you are not a man of good repute and I don't need your help anymore. But no, thanks to her undying and unchangeable faith, she does not choose to argue, and she accepts what Jesus says. Her answer is a sign of her humility. She says, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The canine woman is so humble that she recognises her state of being nothing before Jesus. And as a result of 
the perseverance of that Canaanite woman's faith. She is personally commended by Jesus. O woman, Jesus says, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And the daughter of the Canaanite woman was immediately healed for a time that very hour. Jesus does not need to go near her daughter to be healed. This is the sweetest reward of the woman's faith. Friends, may Jesus find us so faithful when he returns here on earth. I sincerely hope that, like that wonderful Canaanite woman, all of us here and online watching will have a living legacy of faith. When we are confronted by insurmountable problems, no matter who we are or where we are, may we remember that story of the Canaanite woman and how she overcame temptation and trial in her life. And may we remember that every time we pray for something, the answer is already on its way before we even ask it of God. We just need to trust God's timetable and God's infinite wisdom that he will answer us according us to his will and his purpose. As it says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For she or he who comes to God must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So friends, as we continue to trust and believe and seek God, we stand together now and affirm our faith in Him as we say the words of the Apostles' Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the right hand of the Spirit, he ascended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of us. Amen. Do please be seated as we're led in our time of intercession.
Thank you. 